So in this presentation, we are going to look at network diagrams. So this is commonly used in project management science. So here's my question here. Construct a network diagram for a project consisting of the following activities. So we have seven projects there, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we can sort of see that on the, the list on the right hand side, we can see the dependencies. A and B have no dependencies, as that is to say they are not requiring any job to be finished before they can get started. On the other hand, activity C requires A and B to be finished before it can proceed. So let's first off write our um, first node here. I'm going to call this node 1. And the A and B have no predecessors. They have no dependencies. So I'm going to straight away we can put in activity A and activity B. Okay. Now let's put in some nodes here. 2 and 3. Okay. So the next activity is activity C, and it depends on A and B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to st have activity C pointing from node 2. So that's activity C. But I have to reflect in the fact that it's dependent on B as well. So what I'm going to do is join nodes 2 and 3 with a dummy node, a dummy uh, activity. So I'm going to put a dashed line here. So you might notice that the other lines are full lines, but this is a dashed line. So that's activities A, B, and C taken care of. Now, activity D, I'm just going to put a little node in here first. Uh, activity D, I'm going to call that node 4, uh, it just solely depends on activity B. So it can, it's just can be represented as an arrow going out from node 3. So, and that goes into the new, this new, uh, sorry, uh, that goes into new node 5. So that's activity D. Now, next one is activity uh, E. And that depends solely on activity D. So some, it's got an, ar an arrow coming out of here, node 5. But just let's read forward for a second and s look at this no, uh, activity F. That depends on C and E. So I sort of have to be mindful of what, uh, that now. So what I'm going to do is join uh, nodes 4 and 5 by the arrow to represent activity E there. And now we can sort of put in the activity F there. So just it just to sort of uh, point out the fact that sometimes uh, once you get uh, going through a few of these, that it, it pays to sort of read forward to sort of see how things will turn out in the long run. So I can put in activity F there, and that goes into the, this node six. Okay. And lastly, we have activity G. That just depends on D, and that can go into six as well. There are no no uh, there are no activities that are dependent on F or G. That is the end of it. So six is the last node. Okay, that ends our presentation.